Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Welcome back, friends, to this final show of The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. And if you want to catch up with any of the shows over the past three and a half years, you can do so by going to my YouTube channel, which is Laura Maxwell X Spiritist, and you will find a playlist there of most of the shows. And this this actual series, because it's the final one, has its own special playlist there as well on the YouTube channel. And that is with myself and our guest, Dana Emmanuel. And Dana is back again today. She is going to share more of her testimony. And, you know, some of it is quite alarming, quite extraordinary because she was a paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, and she's going to share a little more of that today and how she came to Jesus and how those evil spirits were cast out. Um, But before we do that, Dana is also going to recap a little bit on testing the spirits because we've been talking about testing the spirits quite a bit lately and she has a little bit more to say on that today. So let's go across now to Florida and say hello to Dana. Hi, Laura. How are you doing? I'm okay. And how are you? Oh, I'm so blessed to be here. Thank you. How are oh, you? That's good. Yeah, I'm blessed to, to be here too. Yes, I'm good. We're actually into spring now here in Scotland and we've actually got sunshine today and, and not rain. So, <laughs> Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. And how are you in, in Florida? What's your weather like? Oh, my goodness. It's been so rainy. <laughs> How is it? Oh, dear. Yes, it's been warm and it's hot and uh, humid. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so. Well, it's lovely to have you back on in, in, in the show, Dana, and it's been such a treat um, talking with you. And, you know, but last time we were talking about testing the spirits and um, we wanted to just say a little bit more on that before we wrap up that, that topic today. Um, so, so share a little bit more about that. Uh, yes. With, with uh, thanks. I guess it, it was pretty much trying to say, um, you know, how the testing the spirits is more or less it's, it's discernment and it's, uh, you know, discerning uh, the, the word of God and what it says. You know, if we know the know the word enough that when you know we hear something we'll know whether it's a spirit of truth or spirit of error behind it or if Mm -hmm. it's not right you know just like in the case like i mentioned with um paul and the damsel you know Mm -hmm. he did not ask the damsel questions from the bible you know he, he he more or less just discerned it because of his knowledge he has of god's word and what it says you know um, mm-hmm. So he knew that, uh, you know, she had a spirit of divination because what she was doing, you know, mm-hmm. um, but it's always usually linked. Um, if you really look at the verses, it usually always is pretty much linked to, um, you know, deviating from the word of truth and, you know, um, being able to discern that and, you know, uh, correct it or, you know, act yeah. on it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean, and um, kind of reminds me as well of, for example, um, there may be someone who who is actually a born again Christian and, and who is perhaps in our church or or you know someone who who is in ministry even. Um, so they they will say that Jesus came in the flesh. They they will say all the things that you would. Um, do to to perhaps test someone <laughs> in Jesus' name, and yet there's just something not quite right, um, and you're not quite sure what it is. And sometimes, you know, God will, will show you through discernment that perhaps that person um, 
actually is operating with witchcraft or um, can we say a Jezebel type personality? I don't like using that word, but, you know, someone who's perhaps quite narcissistic and yeah. really doesn't have the church's best interests at heart. And that can be hard to detect. And again, the person will pass the test, you know, as it were, if you were to ask them all these questions from Scripture. And yet by discernment, um, you can discern that there's, there's something isn't right there. So, yeah, it's, it's not just about same applies with so-called ghosts or so-called angels. It's not just about do they answer the tests correctly, but just that um, that level of, of discernment as well. Yes, just like in the um, the these other um, false religions, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. they uh, many of those say that Jesus come back and you know that he died and he, you know, he came here in the flesh and that he died and rose again. I mean, a lot of them say that, but they're also cults. <laughs> you know, they yeah. they deviated yeah. from the truth somewhere, and so they're not biblical. You know, mm-hmm. so. Um, that's what I put. I think it means because it, it it makes sense, you know. <clears throat> sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking about, and obviously it can work in the, in the discernment of someone with a good spirit as well, you know. And I thought about um, in uh, John one four seven when when Jesus is actually talking with uh, Nathaniel and, and he says, you know, Nathaniel is someone who has no guile in him. So obviously Jesus could see that because he discerned it um, from his spirit rather than uh, testing him on his Bible knowledge or something like that. Amen. Um, Yes. um, And then we were actually talking off off air recently about, you know, just the different fads that come along, the different heresies that come along. That always have came along down through church history, and you know, recently because it's something quite close to our hearts, the whole thing of people believing they can talk to ghosts or angels or so on. Um, I've noticed that there's now, and it's probably been going on for quite a while. Let's face it, because we don't always hear about everything right away. Yes. Um, you know, born again, spirit-filled ministries that are. Uh, teaching people, running workshops and so on, teaching people how to apparently see in the spirit or or, um, operate in the supernatural power of God. Um, So, you know, at first hand, that might look like, oh, well, maybe they're teaching them um, how to cast out demons or, you know, something that, that Jesus has taught us to do. Is that such a bad thing? But when you look a little bit more at what they're actually teaching, sometimes you can see that it's, is steering off into um, quite new age stuff. And there's something I saw recently that um, someone in ministry is indeed offering um, this type of teaching, how to, teaching people how to walk in in the supernatural, uh, believing, of course, that they're doing this through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. But um, what this person said was that, uh, of course, we're referring here to Hebrews 12 regarding the great cloud of witnesses. What this um, teacher is saying is that we can now see this great cloud of witnesses and we can now even talk to them. Oh, wow. Um, so, and I, know, and I know that a lot of Christians will, will because this is the respected teacher, respected leader, um, who has interne- international co- connections with big ministries? Uh, you know, a lot of Christians will obviously they want to trust leaders, and they might think, "Oh, this is a new thing. Didn't know we could do that." But hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. what what they're not realising is that there, there is no precedence in the Bible for us just being able to talk to this great cloud of witnesses. Um, God certainly doesn't ask us to do that. Um, And if you're going to go along to a workshop that shows you how to see in the spirit and how to, for example, talk to this cloud of witnesses, there's something far wrong here. And again, this is like test the spirits in Jesus' name, as Dana has said. Is this uh, compatible with the Bible? Is it consistent? Um, And we'd have to say no. To, To me, you know, Right away, the alarm and uh, the alarm bells are, are are shouting. 
this great cloud of witnesses, okay, they might be very um, godly men and women when they were alive and now they're uh, in heaven, but the Bible says don't talk to the dead. We're not meant to even try to talk to them. Amen. Um, so whether this, whether someone turns up claiming to be Isaiah, Elijah, Moses, whoever, it, it, it's not going to be because it's not what the Bible you know, it, it's not consistent. That's not what God does. It's not some, if, if a spirit turns up pretending to be the, the, the ghost of Smith Wigglesworth or Billy Graham, uh, you know, it won't be because, again, this is not how God operates. So, again, this, this new kind of a thing, talking to the great cloud of witnesses, uh, what, what do you think, Dana? Oh, I think it's um, it's actually really bad. Um, I notice, and she also puts, you know, this person um, says Jesus is the door into the spirit realm, and he's also the door on the way out. You know, so it's almost like since she's using Jesus, <laughs> the label of Jesus going into this spiritual door, that it makes it okay, where it's not. You know, we can't add Jesus to something to make it okay and Mm -hmm. you know she's got this um they also talk about where um now everything is reversed in the new testament that instead of you know how in the old testament says you should not um touch a dead body you know Mm -hmm. um and all this well she's saying that you can touch a dead body now because you can give life to it but see she's taking scriptures and she's jumbling them up and she's creating her own teachings out of it. That's dangerous, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Jesus didn't tell us in the New Testament that we could talk to the, you know, earthbound spirits. And mm-hmm. these spirits wouldn't be earthbound anyway. But we know when that cloud of witnesses is going to come. And it's not, we don't have access to go back and forth to it. They're going to oh. come with Jesus, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. when he returns. And that we can't just make that happen any time. Um, no. There's a lot of problem with these teachings, you know. <clears throat> I, I agree with you, and, and obviously this woman means well, and and ministries like that were not slamming these people. Um, it's just a heart breaks because we can see we can see through it because we've been there, um, and you know, I would agree. You know, if for example. You could just talk to the cloud of witnesses at will, um, you know, sit down and decide, okay, I'm going to enter through Jesus into the spiritual realm and talk to the cloud of witnesses and come back out through Jesus again. You know, it would strike me that like any of these things, whether it be talking to so-called ghosts, talking to so-called angels, um, if, if we thought that we had access to just have a chat with the cloud of witnesses whenever we wanted to, it strikes me that, that that could become a very addictive type of um, activity, something that one would get really quite addicted to. And also, you know, in a sense, some, like what ghost hunters can, can become like when they get addicted to it, as you've attested to yourself, Dana. Yes. Um, and it would also, you, I can just imagine um, people doing this, and then mm-hmm. it leading them even further astray because if they're not actually talking to Jesus and mm-hmm. a cloud of witnesses, because she's saying they can communicate with him, what are these spirits going to be telling them? You know, that's exactly. just an open door for the demonic to bring uh-huh. in a deception, you know. Exactly. So, so there's yep. a, there is a, there is a, uh, uh, there's something behind it. There's a plan behind this teaching. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I and it is sad, like you said, this lady, she probably doesn't even know, you know, no, that this is a know. deception. I mean, she probably loves the Lord and, you oh, know, yeah. it's just she's yeah. just been deceived. And it is sad Absolutely. because all of the people that love the Lord that, mm-hmm. you know, are going to this person and learning this stuff, they're going to be led astray. Mm-hmm. You know, they're 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 It's going to be really dangerous for them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> It is, and that's that's the the heartbreaking thing about it. Oftentimes, it is people that really love the Lord that that get drawn into stuff like that as well, and people who have worked tirelessly for God, that they've they've worked tirelessly for the kingdom, that they've sacrificed a lot in their life, and they've been strong intercessors. You know, it, it really it is so heartbreaking um, when this happens. And again, I would echo what you said, Dana. Um, 
and for example, the cloud of witnesses or, or whoever it may be, you know, what are they going to tell people anyway? There's nothing they can tell us that we don't. The Bible tells us everything we need to know. Yes. Um, the Bible and in our daily relationship with God, the Holy Spirit tells us what we need to know. So yes. we don't need to, there, there's no information they could give us anyway that, that we need. Yes. Um, and I can imagine, for example, if I was involved in that, I would be, um, if it was myself and friends, well, who did you talk to today? Well, I spoke to John the Baptist, or I spoke to, do you know, and it, it could get really quite uh, distracting, I think, and lead you away from what God is really uh, wanting to do with your life. Yes, and I can, I can, uh, you can almost imagine it's going to be some kind of new revelation that would come mm-hmm. out of it from these witnesses. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then they'll probably throw in something to do with the book of Daniel, <laughs> you know, about the sealed up until the end times. They always uh-huh. throw that in there. You see, they uh-huh. take these verses and put them out of context, but that's how the devil works. Just sure. like when he tempted Jesus, he said, yeah, you know, um, that if you, you know, jump off this, you know, um, I'll give you all the kingdom, you know, and all this. And Jesus, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, you should not test the Lord your God. You know, he knew scripture, but, you know, it's almost like the enemy knows scripture, too. So he tries to use it, but he uses it out of context. That's why we got to really look at the scriptures and say, what does the scriptures tell us? What is mm-hmm. the truth? You know, we can't, just because we hear a scripture, we can't run with that. We have to say, okay, well, let's look at what the Bible actually says, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I could, I could definitely see that leading to new revelations and things like that, you know. Absolutely, and I think that that's often what happens. It, it can seem to be going fine for a long, long time, maybe even for years, and it, and it seems all the information given is very accurate and all that, and then somewhere along the line, error slips in, takes people astray, and, he, and even if the, the error, for example, well, it's all error, but you know, even if the error doesn't um, take them greatly astray people may argue well what's the harm but at the end of the day you're still consorting and communicating with demons and that's only tainting yourself um and breaking god's heart and and i think some folks might say well don't you guys think sometimes people have spoke to angels or sometimes had revelations i mean look at the book of revelation look at what happened to john well yes but if we start to make a doctrine out of it and say that we can offer workshops or training and how to do this, if you try to elicit elicit communication with angels or, or dead people, Amen. yes, it will, it will work because it, it's occultic and the doors will flood right open. Um, you know, and, and interestingly, often you find that, that these types of workshops that people will have a question, for example, and they will get an immediate answer, so so called, from an angel, an immediate answer from um, one of the cloud of witnesses. And yet, isn't it interesting that in our daily lives, when we are praying with the Holy Spirit, it can be a while before we even get an answer from God. Sometimes it can even be years yes. before we get an answer from God because we're walking by faith. Why is it that a lot of these so called supernatural um, revelations? Uh, from these so-called beings gives instant results. That's another, I would say, uh, red flag with it. I can imagine if um, Saul went by this <laughs> when he didn't hear from the Lord, you know, he <laughs> could have, uh, it, well, actually, it kind of is what he did. <laughs> he went yeah. and, uh, you know, he, um, you know, consulted a familiar spirit and uh, look what it did to him, you know. So exactly. we yeah, can't exactly. go and visit these angels and we can't go visit mm-hmm. these cloud of witnesses. That's nowhere in the Bible for us to even mm-hmm. engage angels in the first place. It says God gives charge over the angels for us. It doesn't mm-hmm. say that we have charge over angels. It says God gives us charge. He's the one that does it. You know, um, I've never seen in the Bible where we're supposed to pray to angels, which us talking to angels would be praying to them. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, it would I, be. Yeah. Yeah, you know, as far as I can see from the Bible, we talk to the Father, God, we talk to Jesus Christ, and we talk to the Holy Spirit, and that is it. Yep. Um, so, sorry for blabbing on there, but I just, but that was just something we saw recently, um, you know, and we thought we would share because. There's always another fad that comes along, but as Dana says, you know, test the spirits. What does the Bible say? Is it consistent um, with the Bible? 
And so let's get back to Dana's amazing testimony and where you left off last time, Dana. Okay. Um, uh, I guess where I left off was uh, where things started to uh, pick up in my own home. Um, I, I know I had mentioned before when I very first got into the paranormal um, that I had some activity in my grandmother's house. But after we moved out of there and we, you know, moved and got our own place and everything, and after she passed, things were pretty quiet for a while. And I was, you know, we were just going out and doing our investigations and, you know, um, and got into it. <clears throat> But then um, it started getting where, you know, things started happening in our home. And, but these, the activities started getting more aggressive. Um, there come a point in time where my husband, you know, started having episodes of being held down where he couldn't yell or anything. Okay. <clears throat> and he would literally feel like something was sitting on him and he couldn't, you know, he just said that he was froze. He couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Um and he, he started having dreams um, about a woman, you know, coming to him. And she had long red hair. And she was trying to seduce him in these dreams. He was very disturbed by it. Um, so much so that he felt somewhat guilty, you know, about it. And he came yeah. to me and, and he told me about what had happened. And around this time, this was when I was looking up stuff online, you know, about what to do. And I was looking about, you know, in these kind of cases and everything. And, um, and I found where, you know, I had seen somewhere where demons will pose as, as a woman. And, you know, this is something that happens. It actually happens pretty often in cases of like incubus and succubus, which you've actually done a lot of shows recently on Laura. And, um, mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, you've really, I wish I had heard you back then. <laughs> um, but anyway, yep. I told my husband, you know what I thought, and that it might be a demonic spirit, you know, that was actually posing as a woman. And it was like once we started realizing that it was likely a demon, um, the dreams he started to have was becoming violent. Um, one night he woke up and he grabbed a rosary bead necklace that we had, he had next to the bed. And he started rebuking it in the name of Jesus. And then the necklace just busted, you know, right in midair. Mm -hmm. And after everything calmed down and after the activity stopped, we realized that my husband actually had bite marks on his growing area. Oh, dear. So this was getting serious, you know. And, um, you know, like I said, I had already witnessed, you know, people being attacked and things like that. And. So I was like, you know, it's so scary not knowing what might happen, you know. <clears throat> and the rosary beads, um, you know, the reason the rosary beads didn't work is because, you know, the people in the Catholicism religion, um, you know, they asked to, to bless Mary, uh, the mother, to bring their prayers to her divine son and to plead for his aid. Well, they don't, they bring rosary intentions to Mary with the hope that their request will be answered. But we cannot come to the Father, Jesus, through Mary. You see, it just isn't biblical. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholics do get this mostly from Luke 1, 28, where it says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Mary was described by God as highly favored, and the phrase highly favored comes from a single Greek word, which essentially means much grace. Mary received God's grace, and grace is unmerited favor. She wasn't divine, and she wasn't part of the Godhead, as Jesus is. She mm -hmm. is also not a mediator between us and Jesus or us and God the Father, because it says in John fourteen six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So by us trying to put Mary in that kind of position, a divine position, with some kind of authority as a mediator, is idolatry. And for us mm -hmm. to talk to her is necromancy. There's no way around it. There's no, um, there's no exceptions, you know, like mm -hmm. in the scriptures where it talks about, uh, you know, necromancers, how we shouldn't talk to the dead, things like that. There's no exceptions. It doesn't say for the yeah. saints. It doesn't say for Mary. 
um, yeah. or in or our relatives or anyone you know um so it's idolatry mm-hmm. um so this is why the rosary bees weren't helping you know when we were trying to use them i was using like all kind of different things um i had bought bibles and i opened them up and i mean i literally bought so many bibles i had them open in every room including the closets, the bathrooms, the laundry room, and I am not Mm -hmm. (laughs) over-exaggerating. I literally did. People wondered when they come over why I had Bibles in every every room like that, but we were like, we were honestly at our wits' end. Oh, oh, it's Mm -hmm. awful, you know, when all these things are happening and you can't control it, you know, and it's, it's, it's one thing to watch a scary movie and, and you know, uh, get scared. But when this stuff is really happening and you're in bed at night and you hear something come in your room, you feel it bump the bed, you feel something get in the bed with you, I mean, and not knowing what it's going to do, I mean, that that kind of fear grips you. <laughs> you it's know? terrifying. It it's really terrifying. is. It really is. Um, so um, after these attacks on my husband... I started researching a lot more, you know, about what to do regarding true deliverance of demonic spirits. Okay, I searched online. I did, I I come across testimonies such as yours, Laura, which truly, after hearing it, it honestly put an urgency in my spirit, you know, that I needed to do whatever I needed to do to get rid of these spirits. I already knew these spirits could become physical. I, and was that the is that the one where I was on TV and I mentioned about how it led to my mother's suicide? I'm pretty. I I I, I know I heard the testimony. Yeah. Um, it must have been. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. not sure what because I have seen several. You know of your testimony, so mm-hmm. I can't really you know say which one for sure. But sure. you would yeah. know whichever one was out in 2011. <laughs> Um, but I do, rem- I, it's just the testimony itself stuck in my mind, you know, and I know it had to be horrible to go through. And I'm so sorry you had to go through that and, and your mom, you know, but <clears throat> it really put that urgency in my spirit though, you know, that well, I'm so glad it spoke uh, to you, Dana. I mean, that, oh, if yes. the show had only reached you and, and you and your family, then I'm just so, so grateful to God. That's wonderful. Yes. I, I just couldn't bear anything you know, like that happening mm-hmm, in my mm-hmm. family, you know, I, I, and I was praying to God, you know, to get us out of the situation we were in. Um, I went out, I, I bought books, um, and one of them uh, that I bought was an audio book. It was called The Invisible War by Chip Ingram. <clears throat> and in this book, it had some deliverance prayers in it. And uh, there was one, one night in particular, um, I had that audio book playing on my laptop next to me, and I would listen to it. You know, I'd fall asleep, and it was still going. And it had prayers on there that was playing. And my husband, uh, during the night, now this book was like eight hours long, so <laughs> that's why it kept going. <laughs> but um, my husband felt something, and he felt it come in the room, and he heard, you know, he just knew. You could just feel it. <laughs> And it got on the bed next to him, and oh. he felt the boot, the bed move, you know, next to him. And while this was happening, he heard a deliverance prayer on the laptop playing. So he started to follow along in saying the prayer, you know, silently. Oh. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, the fan in my room just flew across the room, and it hit the wall. Well, oh. I woke up because it was a loud <gasps> crash, you know. I woke up. And my husband was behind me, and he grabbed my shoulder, and he was shaking me. And he told me, he said, Dana, Dana, cut that off. And I said, what? And he said, whatever it is, I don't like that. And I heard, you know, right away it was a prayer. And I said, I don't care what it don't like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it playing, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking it was just the, the prayer playing, which is what was causing it to react. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that my husband had started praying the prayer with it. You mm-hmm. see, that's when a prayer becomes effective is when it comes from the heart. When the sure. person is saying the prayer, you can sit, let it play all day long in your house. But if it's not coming from you and your intention and your will, it's mm-hmm. not going to have no effect. You know, that's mm-hmm. like having some a stranger in your house praying, but yet you're doing all kind of things to cause activity in your home. You know, yeah. you're you're still you still have that open door of these things to happen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, and it's like uh, 
you know, true prayers must be from the heart. You know, these are yep. the effective prayers. Um, mm-hmm. Like James 4, 3 says, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. Mm-hmm. You know, so we there's a, there are incorrect ways of saying prayers and, uh, you know, and, or that you consume it upon your lust, like the end of that verse says, you know. So... Uh, why was all this happening in my home? <clears throat> you know, who or what was this spirit? Was this something that followed me home from another investigation? Well, at this time, I really, at this point, was thinking um, that it had to do with that case I had, the one that was really severe where the guy was thrown. I thought maybe it attached to me and come to my home with me, you know, or something. Well, then I went on a private investigation, um, and this was after the, this attack. And I was there with some of, of the investigators, and we were sitting on the porch. And while we were talking, one of the investigators, which was a newer uh, team member we had on our team, she had mentioned, now this is out of nowhere. She had no idea what I was going through. I had not even told the other investigators about this with my husband because I felt like this was private because it was, you know, these kind of attacks and everything. I didn't want to embarrass mm-hmm. my husband. You know, I just sure. I, I didn't tol- tell them. Well, then she starts telling us on the porch about a woman with long red hair that was starting to come to her husband at night and oh. how she, yeah, and how she was trying to seduce him and everything. And then she said, now this woman was one that she was what we called a dowsing expert. She even used to work with the, uh, you know, companies to look for water and all this. So, and uh-huh. she used to sell the dowsing rods too. So she, um, you know, she was telling me that this woman had gave her husband a name though and that she remembered that name on a grave because it was a distinctive name and -hmm. that she remembered that name at a grave that she once doused you know it was recent to that time well then she said that she went to the grave and that she (laughs) you know she told his spirit that that was her husband and she you know did some kind of ritual or whatever Mm -hmm. but she supposedly stopped it from messing with her husband Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking then, I told my husband what happened. I went home. I said, you are not going to believe what this lady told me. I said, this is so weird. And I told him what happened. And he was immediately, he said, that's what it is. It was attached to the woman. She's been in our house recently to help because we used to train with the dowsing rods. And, you know, we would all Mm -hmm. come at my house for review meetings and we would look over evidence from prior investigations we'd talk about it and everything well while we were there we would practice with the dowsing rods we would hide objects and we would have you know while the others wouldn't weren't in the room then they'd come out and we would try to search for the object so she had been in our house and done dowsing there so my husband right away thought and and i did too in a way i thought okay Gosh, maybe that woman did have an attachment because the same thing that happened to her husband, the a long redhead woman, you know, come to her husband in dreams. I mean, yeah. that's such a coincidence. But I didn't realize that what it was was since I was getting close to realizing it was a demon, you see, all of a sudden this woman is going through this and all. And then she is feels led to tell me about it and all this. So it was I mean. The enemy works in so many ways, <laughs> and he's very clever, you know. Um, he orchestrates things to happen, you know. And it was like he was trying to get my mind off the fact that it was a demon and just trying to let me feel like it was a woman spirit, you know what I mean, that was coming through this yeah. other woman, yeah. her family and all. So, <clears throat> thank God, <laughs> uh, after my husband, like I said, we started believing it was a demon, you know, when this come out. And it was just something. I, we just kept praying about it. And, and, you know, these attacks kept happening. And so we're like, we just, even though that seems so powerful and strong, we just still deep down felt like, no, it's a demon, you know. So, um, you know, after all that, like I said, I, by then we just thought, no, okay, it, it probably is just a demon. You know, it's just something not right. <laughs> so, you know, we're, you know, we're always looking at possible reasons things are happening and, you know, and all sure. this stuff. And it's like, you know, the paranormal community will look at possible natural causes of hauntings. You know, they'll believe that like water or limestone is acts, uh, acts as a conduit, you know, mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. not true. You know, mm-hmm. our ignorance and rejection of God and his truth, which is found in the word, is the biggest conduit, <laughs> 
truly yes. sin yes. and unbelief is what causes or contributes to demonic oppression and possession, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really my ignorance of the word and not realizing what I was doing as far as the, the uh, my involvement in the occult practices, you know, necromancy and, and consulting familiar spirits and all this was actually what was contributing to it. You know, I was yes. out looking for all these all these ways I was burning sage. <clears throat> I was saying St. Michael, um, the archangel prayers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, like we talked about, you're not supposed to pray to angels, you know, yeah, um, yeah. there's nowhere in the Bible. It says that now God mm-hmm. will send his angels to protect us and to do, you know, to uh, war, you know, against the demonic for us, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but he doesn't tell us to do that. You know, um, like I said, I had these open Bibles in every room of my house. Um, I had prayed over each one, putting anointing oil on it. <laughs> but the problem with this technique was I was I was using what was um, the fact of what, I'm sorry, I was using the Bible as a tangible weapon instead mm-hmm. of applying it to my life. You see, in the sure. Bibles, sure. if I were actually seeking the truth, I would have read where it said, do not consult familiar spirits or not communicate sure. with the dead. I would have read Ephesians 6, where it tells us, you know, what our true weapons of warfare are. Uh, One being the word of God, as it's our sword, our only Mm -hmm. offensive weapon besides prayer, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And and even Paul says in Philippians 4, 9, says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. In other words, you know, the God of peace will be with us if we do these things, you know, that's in the Bible, you know, and, and obey him, you know. Obeying, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and Dana, that reminds me, when my mother and I were being attacked by spirits, we tried all sorts of things, including uh, going to sleep with the Bible under our pillow. Um, but, you know, oh. that... that it was kind of like using it as a ritual tool because we weren't reading the Bible. We didn't, we weren't walking in relationship with Jesus. So it really was doing no good uh, using it in that manner. Wow. Wow. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just something how you, because cause you always hear about the Bible. You see on TV even, you know, and different exorcists and stuff. They take the Bible, they slap it on somebody's back and the demons growl. You know, the demons, they don't care about that. It, they look at it as a book. The only time it bothers them is when we apply it to our lives. <laughs> yeah, when we're walking in holiness and we're walking obediently with Jesus, the Bible yeah. is, is a part of us. Then it's powerful, sure. Yes, yes. So, um, so after these attacks got so bad, um, there was a time where, um, uh, we were sitting in the living room one night, it was my husband and I, and, uh, my grandson was in the other room in my watching TV and, um, he got quiet in there and something just told me to check on him. Well, I looked around there and he was sitting up in my bed, looking down at the floor, like he was scared to death. Now he was only like four at this time. Oh, I know. And I said, what's the matter? You know, and I looked and he says, I don't know. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, I don't know. He said, it's a monster or something. I said, a oh. monster. I said, Pa, there ain't no such thing as no monster. I said, oh, I said, look, there ain't no monster. I don't see no monster. I said, where's a monster? And about that time, he jumps off the bed and he started rubbing the floor. And he says, I don't know. He said it went in the floor or something. Because oh, he was, dear. and he looked so confused. He was looking oh. around, and I was like, right then mm-hmm. I knew, Laura, that whatever it was in that house, that it was now appearing in front of him. Oh. And all I can think of is, you know, he's so little, and I mean, he was our heart. He still is, but, yeah. you know, it was like, what's it going to do to him now, you know? Oh. And mm-hmm. it's just, it was just horrible. And I told my husband, I says, look. I said, we're going to have to do something. I said, you need deliverance. I, cause I really thought I was, like I said, I was, I was online looking up everything I could about deliverance and everything and all this stuff that was mm-hmm. happening. It seemed like it was more directed at my husband. So I mm-hmm. kept thinking that he had a, a spirit, <laughs> you know, or an attachment or something. And I told him, I said, you need deliverance, <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, it wasn't funny then, but you know, looking no, back know, at it, it's like, I'm thinking it's all him. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. I told him, I says, I says, we need to go to a church or something, and you need deliverance. And finally, after that had happened with my son, my grandson, he says, okay. He says, all right, we'll go. We'll see what they say. <laughs> so the next, that next weekend, 
uh, I talked him into going. We went to church. And after the church service was over with, we walked down and we talked to um, the prayer counselor, which was also the assistant pastor. Mm -hmm. So I talked to him. We was telling him, you know, I said, look, I said, my husband's been getting all these attacks. I said, I think he's got an attachment or something. I said, it might have been from one of my investigations. And I was explaining to him, you know, that I I was a paranormal investigator and, you know, and all this. And he says, yeah, wait a minute, you do what? And I told him, I says, well, I'm a paranormal investigator, you know. I said, we go and help people that's got, you know, uh, spirits in their homes. I mean, I'm thinking at this point like I'm a demonologist or something, you know, but <laughs> I'm I, I, not even having a clue, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> so, and he says, oh, honey, you got to stop doing what you're doing. I said, mm-hmm. what do you mean? And he said, he said, well, that's the occult. He said, you got to stop doing that. He said, that's probably the very reason you have all this stuff happening in your home. Yeah. And I don't know what it was, you know, because my brother had even told me, Dana, look at the scripture in Leviticus. Look at the scripture in Deuteronomy, you know, mm-hmm. where it mm-hmm. says, do not consult mm-hmm. with familiar spirits. And it talks about necromancy. But I just didn't want to believe it. You know, I just mm-hmm. didn't want to believe it. You know, I just kept yeah. thinking that's something different. I'm not literally calling up the dead. I mean, you know, that's what I uh-huh. thought it meant, you know, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize what it really was. <laughs> and when that got when that preacher said that. Just something in my spirit. It made me feel like, oh, my goodness, he's right. Mm-hmm. He's probably mm-hmm. right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so, he, so he looked at my husband, and he says, why do you have that on? Well, my husband had on one of the rosary bead necklaces. I mean, I had the rosary bead necklaces hanging up over my doorways, over my windows in my home. I mean, I really did. I had them all over the house. <laughs> I was trying. We were trying everything, you know. Sure. If, you know, to the, to the normal person walking in my home, it would have looked real silly, but it was just something that you know it was horrible so the guy he asked my husband why he had it on and we both explained to him that it was for protection and i told him i says oh i have them all over my house you know and he says well would you please take it off and at the time i'm thinking well it's a cross why would he have it we're at a church why would he say take off a cross you know so he took it off and he's you know put it in his pocket and, and the and the guy says he says I said, well, why, what's wrong with that? And he says, well, you have to know something. He says, when you take your faith and you put it in an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. You only need to have faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. He's what's going to free you. And when he said that, it was like, I, it was just like everything. Just, I seen it all different. I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. You know, because I'm thinking of all this stuff I've been trying you know, the sage, the Bibles, the, the, I mean, we tried holy water. We tried so many things, you know, yeah, yeah. and none of it worked, but it suddenly made sense. Why? It was only because I only needed to have faith in Jesus and believe on him and his word, literally, <laughs> you know, and, and, and do that. Well, so he started praying for my husband. And when he started praying for my husband, he was also praying for me, too. And he was praying, you know, he was he was asking God to take any kind of desire out of my heart for the paranormal and for the occult and all this. And uh, and while he was praying this stuff, I had this feeling that I needed to get out of there <laughs> and run. <laughs> but, I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't do it because I was uh, embarrassed, wise, but I, <laughs> but I also yeah. was so desperate at this point that – and then – It was suddenly a revelation, you know, from this preacher that I only needed to have faith in Jesus and Jesus would uh, conquer this. You know what I mean? So So I just started praying right away. In the name of Jesus, you've got to go. You've got to go. Something just told me that it was actually a spirit that was making mm-hmm. me feel that way, you know, sure, that I needed sure. to get out of there. And it was, a, it was, a, it was an awful panic attack, uh, mm-hmm. the feeling that I had. And I didn't know at first why I was having it. But then it occurred to me it was the power of God, you know, yep. coming over us, uh, you know, from this pastor praying over us and that that's why i was feeling that way so it makes such, sense you know, yeah you know and i was the same the first couple of times i had deliverance and demons cast out me um you know while the christians would begin to pray for me i just felt this overwhelming feeling of oh man i gotta get out of here i gotta run out of this building yeah and like that i realized that's not really my feeling it's the demon that wants me to run out um and wow. oftentimes people when they get deliverance they they do describe that initial feeling 
it passes, obviously, then they get free, but they do describe that because, yeah, the demon wants you to run it, doesn't want to be cast out. Yeah, and it's so Absolutely. weird you went through the same thing like that. Wow. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, but when, I, when, he, when they started doing that, like I said, I... Then I just started praying and rebuking it in Jesus' name. And I, it was like I was so scared, and I felt panicked, and I kept telling myself. And I, I was thinking to myself of what that pastor just told me. And I was thinking, no, in the name of Jesus. Because I'm thinking, no, Jesus can do this. Only Jesus. That's all I need. You know, it's just him. You know, I just need to have faith in him. And I kept yep. praying it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you've got to go. And I mean, within a minute, maybe, I felt this sudden lift. I mean, it really, it just broke. That feeling I had just broke. And it was such a relief. And I mean, we just, he kept praying over us and everything. But it was just, from that moment on, I really could see it for what it really was, though, you know. And I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, my goodness, after all that time, it was because what I was doing, you know, it wasn't a spirit over here that followed his home. It wasn't a, you know, this and that. Yes, it was demonic spirits, but it was yeah. because of what I was doing was a doorway for them to come in my life and in our sure. my family's home, you know. And, you know, it, it this I just forgot to mention, I wanted to mention that um, there was a point in time when I was going through this in my house where one night my daughter wasn't there and I... <clears throat> I wanted to go in her room and do an EVP recording, you know, because I was trying to find out, you know, what it was and everything. Mm -hmm. And I went in the closet in her room and there was no one home, just me and my husband. And I went in there and I was asking questions and I did ask that question. Do you uh, believe, do you confess that Jesus Christ come in the flesh? And I was asking these, I figured I was going to provoke it to say something. Well, I didn't hear anything at the time of the recording and afterwards after I did the review of it I can only sit there when I was listening I couldn't hear any paranormal voices but I can hear my husband in the background in the other room and he was like angry about something and he was mumbling and he was uh you know because the anger issues that we had in the home it was just all kind of problems we were having in the home and it was just all this stuff you could just he sounded like like he was about to explode in there he was so angry and i at the time like i said i didn't even know that was going on but it was almost like god was trying to show me it's not just through paranormal activity these things come in your house and affect you know they come in through other ways they affect your family in other ways too you know, it was almost like I just knew that whatever I was sitting there trying to question and never, you know, it was almost like I knew that whatever all this stuff was happening was also affecting my family, you know, yeah. through the anger yeah. issues, through the drug issues, through the, there was so many issues. It really was. And yeah. it was just like, wow, it was just a revelation. You know, I know a lot of people say, well, you didn't hear a voice that, you know, God didn't tell you anything. But no, I think really God gave me a revelation at that time, you know, um, that these things actually are the root of all this stuff, you know, death, destruction, you know, uh, marital problems, drug problems, all these problems are demonic at the root, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, they are the masterminds behind all this stuff, you know, Um, because they are out to seek, they seek to destroy us, you know, and to kill us even. Um, But, you know, I'm just so thankful (laughs) That I got the deliverance done, and I seen things for what they were, and I I know, um, you know, I don't. There's no problem with people praying over their homes. I I actually suggest it, <laughs> but it was weird because after we got delivered that day, I come home, and before I even got rid of everything, I did get rid of everything. But before that happened, everything stopped. We never had another, uh, nothing else happened. So, you wow. see, it was me that needed deliverance. I <laughs> was that open door from what I was doing. And, <laughs> you know, we had to repent. And we had to, you know, um, I, like I said, I always thought I was saved and everything. But I, you know, I prayed to God. I, I wanted Jesus to be the Lord of my life at that time. You know, I, <laughs> I, I got born again. <laughs> 
Yeah. So um, I we I asked the Holy Spirit to come into me and and everything, and it was just like He gave me the revelation and the and the desire for His Word too and His truth, you mm-hmm. know, because uh, you notice know, so like a lot of times people will want to believe a certain thing, and you can show them scriptures, but they'll eh, you know that's okay, they'll ignore it, they'll reject, they'll suppress the truth, you know, yeah. but when you're really seeking the truth. If you're an heir, you want to know, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, I don't, you know, hey, because it's that uh, truth that's going to set us free, you know, and bring Amen. us closer to the Lord, you know, um, we don't want nothing to come between us and the Lord, you know, um, mm. but the, the, pretty much that's my testimony um, was was the fact that I, you know, it was what I was doing, my involvement in the occult that was bringing all this stuff <laughs> into my home and, 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 uh, you know, causing the torment of all my family, you know, um, mm-hmm. like even my daughter, she couldn't sleep. My son was in jail. I mean, there was just so many problems. My, my younger son was having health issues that we never did, never could mm-hmm. find the diagnosis of it. Bleeding. Mm-hmm. He would throw up, he would have blood, he would go to the bathroom with blood. Oh. And he <sighs> even had testing done. He would, they even went in with a scope. They never found what was wrong. You know, mm-hmm. but he, it was just all this stuff, you know, I mean, these, they, they really are out to kill us, you know, and our families. And, you know, um, I just want the truth, you know, that's, that's all that matters, you know, is God's word and what he says and, and um, the other stuff can go where it comes from, <laughs> you know. But, Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's such a powerful testimony, Dana, we only have a minute or two left yeah. uh, and, the, the beautiful thing is, like like so many of us that have been through this type of thing um, and then come to Jesus and had the demons cast out of us, um, very often um, Jesus will then uh, use us in a deliverance ministry. And, and that is now the case with Dana. She she is in the deliverance ministry um, and God has, has given her that gift and that anointing. And so, you know, I would urge people to look at Dana's blog and YouTube channels. Just remind us again what what they're called, Dana. Uh, On YouTube, it's actually Exposing the Enemy, uh, just like it's spelled. And Mm -hmm. then on the blog, it is www.exposingtheenemy.com, but it's we drop the E off the beginning of it. It just starts with the X. And um, I would love you, Dana, to end with a prayer and once you've ended with prayer I've got a special announcement uh, to make so so please go ahead and do pray for our dear audience okay Okay. um oh father god I want to take this moment to honor you lord and to thank you for everything that you have done in laura's life and in my life and I thank you for all of the beautiful testimonies that you have come you know through laura's show and um you know, all this time that she's been on the air, Father, I ask that you still continue to use her to reach others and to proclaim your loving truth and to lead many people to you. Um, I pray that you will be glorified in everything that we do. Um, I pray that you keep us humble and uh, that we'll always seek your heart and remain faithful to you always. Um, I Thank you so much, Lord. I'm so blessed, Lord, to be able to share my testimony. I know there's power in the testimony, Lord. And I I just can't thank you enough, Lord. I really can't. Um, Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And please pray, Dana, for any listeners who, who, they might be Christians, they might not be, um, they might be, you know, into paranormal investigations or thinking that they're talking to ghosts or or angels or so on. Please, please pray for our listeners now too. Yes, Lord. I ask that you um, show your truth, Lord, to the listeners and open their ears, Lord. Open their eyes to be able to receive your truth, Lord. I ask that you put love into their hearts, the love for your truth. And I ask that you will show them the deceptions that's behind, uh, you know, the paranormal and to show them uh, what these spirits really are, Lord, to, to, for you to reveal to them what these spirits really and truly are, uh, because they really are out 
uh, to deceive us and to and to destroy us. Father God, I ask that, uh, you know, anybody out there that wants deliverance to please contact either Laura or I. Um, Laura has a lot of uh, uh, contacts also for that. Um, Lord, I just ask that you please just show people the truth, open their hearts, and um, I pray that you will save many um, as a result, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yes, friends, um, on my own blog, which is our spiritualquest.com, if you go to the contact advice page, there's a list of, of ministries around the world that I've collected um, that, that you can contact for deliverance. Um, and lastly, just, just before we finish, again, just want to thank you all for, for listening over the last three and a half years uh, to this show on Eternal Radio. Uh, do check out other um, shows on that station if you haven't already. That's eternalradio.live. You might particularly like Jason Carter's show, End Time Hour, if you've liked this show. And just one final little announcement to make. This isn't the end of this type of show because sometime later in the year I will be coming back to Eternal Radio. Thank you to my boss, Stephen Merrick, for, for having me back <laughs> um, for a brand new show. And that will be starting later on the year at, at, at some time. A brand new show, similar to this one, in fact, but with a rather uh, lovely change because what we'll be doing is I will actually have with me this time a co-host, which will be a real treat for me and I believe the audience too. And I'd like to announce that the co-host will be no other than my dear friend and sister, Dana Emanuel. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, God, I'm about to cry. Oh, I'm bless. I'm so blessed, Laura. <laughs> Your show has been such a blessing to me. It really has. And I'm just so, um, so blessed. <laughs> that's lovely. You and, know, I, I, sure. And humbled. <laughs> wow. Um, I feel the same way, you know. I felt for, for a couple of months that the show was coming to an end, and I didn't know why, but I knew God was showing me it was coming to an end, and I thought, don't understand this, you know. Oh. What, is there something wrong with it? What's happening? Right. And then it, eventually God showed me that it was because um, he wanted you on board. And then, of course, when I mentioned it to you, and you said that you'd already felt it too, and you hadn't oh. told me because you were waiting until God showed me, and it was like, oh, a right. little confirmation. <laughs> and I think we both even had the same dream one night or something like that. Yes. It seemed, seemed to confirm it too. And it was like, oh, yeah. it's wonderful. That and of is. course, my, my, my boss has got to know you, Stephen Merrick. And um, oh, he's yeah. he's so glad you're coming on board too. Oh, so lovely people. Lovely people. <laughs> they are. They yes. are. Um, so I'm just... With with that with that being said, I just want to thank everyone, all the guests, all the listeners... And really, most of all, I want to thank Jesus for uh, just the, the testimonies and teaching that's went out on this show and how many people around the world have contacted us to say it's helped them. They've even got saved or they've even got delivered. Really just want to thank Jesus uh, with all my heart. It's such an honor um, to, to, to have been a, a part of this. And guys, please come back later on in the year when we'll have a, a brand new show with a brand new title that Dana and I are still working on and we both look forward to having you join us again then. Thank you Dana, God bless you and speak to you again soon sister. Thank you Laura, thank you Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye just now, bye bye. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio Eternal Radio